The first of the ten lectures is called National Accounting. So uh, one might wonder why in a, in a unit about input-output analysis do we need a lecture on national accounting? Accounting sounds like something static and uh, doesn't sound like uh, analysis in any way. But um, in this first lecture I want to show that actually the the roots of input-output analysis have been national accounting and indeed accounting is something static but all uh, input-output analysis is, is uh, actually based on, on uh, accounting principles. Um, probably all of you have heard about accounts, we, we accounted them in, in, in everyday life. Uh, probably the, uh, the, the most simple analogy or the most common analogy would be the account of a company. Every company has an account and they need to disclose those if they're uh, to their uh, shareholders, for example, if they're a listed company. And uh, a part of those accounts, for example, show the expenditures and the revenues of, of that company. So um, basically all the, the ins and outs in, in financial terms. And in principle, a national account is, is nothing different. It is simply a, uh, a listing of some sort that shows you the financial flows that, go, that enter and leave a, a country and that get distributed between the various actors within a country. Um, the fact that input-output analysis is based on national accounting, this already shows you one feature of input-output analysis. I'll just uh, I'll read you from a, a quote from the literature. It has been said that input-output analysis does not incorporate any specific behavioral conditions for the individual or the state. I'll comment on that later on. Except that an economy behave in a consistent manner. And um, Consistent manner just means that accounts balance, for example, that the sum of all inputs is the sum of all outputs. Exactly the same that you would e expect from a, from a balanced company account. And um, the fact that it doesn't incorporate any specific behavioral assumptions means that um, this statement sets input-output analysis in, in a contrast with, for example, computable general equilibrium analysis, which is quite uh, wide, in widespread use for informing economic policy. Now, general equilibrium analysis does make assumptions about the behavior of individuals, but it needs, in comparison with input-output analysis, needs so much more data and, and it, it's, it's nothing compared with input analysis. IO is quite simple compared to, to CGE modeling. So, and because of its simplicity and its, and its uh, lack of, of assumptions, input-output analysis has been used, um, has been described as an ideologically neutral form of analysis. And it's been used in, in, uh, in capitalist economies as well as in, in centrally planned economies in the same way. And I guess this is the, the, the best example with which to underpin that statement that I.O. is... is um, ideologically neutral. Um, Input-output analysis was um, basically uh, invented by, Leontief, uh, by Vasily Leontiev in the 30s and 40s. He received a Nobel Prize for his uh, inventions and uh, I.O. received a second Nobel Prize over its five decade long history and that was for Sir Richard Stone whose uh, major um, innovations were actually uh, on the system of national accounts. Um, now, uh, ever since then, there have been numerous applications of input and output analysis. Uh, uh, for example, it's been it's been used um, for um, for demographic cohort modeling, uh, where I/O has been combined with um, certain. Um, levels of recruitment for the workforce, for example, or for, um, for schooling. Um, it's been used, there's a dynamic version of the input-output model where people have tried to explain the growth of e uh, economies by um, using investment models and accelerator-driven uh, models. Um, it's been used to explain uh, cost uh, price circles, that means uh, 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 price setting uh, in an economy. 
And notably, especially in the, over the last 10 years, there's been a lot of environmental applications. And now, as of 2009, the most dynamic, I would say, the most dynamic area of I.O. is actually on environmental applications. And I think that has something to do that I.O. actually does not need uh, as much data as other mm, models. And um, a lack of data is unfortunately what characterizes environmental science. So from that perspective, the two uh, fit well, well together. Um, today there's a, an international association that governs uh, the input-output world and, and the researchers, the IAOA. Um, also input-output accounting is a, an integral part of the United Nations um, system of national accounts. And they've been uh, developed, a new version of the SNA or system of national accounts been developed about every 15 years. The first one was 1968. Second one, 1993, and now 2008 is the, is the third uh, revision of that system. I should say, uh, probably all of you have heard about GDP, gross domestic product. That's probably the um, quantity out of the system of national accounts that, that most people can associate with in everyday life and know just about what it means. Um, I should say, since 1993, Actually, the, the measure of gross domestic product of an economy is benchmarked on input-output tables. Previously, there were two separate departments in any statistical agency that would estimate GDP and also then construct the input-output tables. Now, uh, input-output tables come first, and GDP is benchmarked on input-output tables. I mentioned the company. Uh, company accounts as, a, as an uh, analogy for national accounts. In actual fact, there are strong links between business accounting and national accounting, as you can see here from one version of the UN handbook. Um, in fact, a national account is, simply speaking, nothing but an accumulation of business accounts. Okay? 